Hi there. Today we're going to talk about using synthetic miticides, uh, <laughs> products that are, generally speaking, impregnated into plastic strips. Uh, these materials are contact miticides. The bees walk on the strips, the mites walk on the bees, and that's how the mites come in contact with the materials. So they're toxic for mites and less toxic for bees. We started off uh, almost 30 years ago using a product called Apistan. Uh, we used that uh, material almost exclusively for about 10 years and then the mites developed resistance to that product. Because of, there's so many generations of mites in a year, any kind of mutations can lead to resistance to products like this and synthetic materials only work on one metabolic pathway in the mite so it's easy for the mites to overcome one single uh, change in their their genes so we used apistan for uh, those 10 years and then we started using a product called checkmite active ingredient being kumafos it's an organophosphate it was pretty rough material Organophosphates are toxic to mammals as well as uh, mites and so we didn't use that product for, for very long but it did get us through a little bit of a gap there. Uh, for approximately 10 years now we've been using a product called uh, Apivar also a, in a strip form and uh, it, it's very effective. Our research has shown that of the synthetic materials it is the least toxic to honeybees. So it's good that way. But we need to protect this product to be able to use it for long term. So what we're recommending and what others are recommending is that we rotate between different products uh, to ensure that we knock out any mites that may be starting to develop a resistance to uh, Apivar. So that's why we use formic acid sometimes and oxalic acid as well. So let's talk a little bit about how to use these Apivar strips. Let's talk a bit about the timing here. Uh, these strips need to be in for 42 days. So if we're to use them in the spring, we need to put them in quite early in the spring, late winter even. Uh, there is also a withdrawal period if you're using them in the spring. So follow the labor regulations on that. But again, you would have to use them quite early if you're gonna use them in the spring. Most times here in this part of the world, we use these strips as a fall treatment. Uh, we have a fall nectar flow that ends around mid-September from goldenrod flowers and after that honey has been uh, harvested by the bees and we've harvested it from the colonies, uh, then we can apply the strips. We can't use these strips when they're honey supers in place. Uh, we also need to protect our hands. Uh, it's not particularly toxic material but it can cause some dermatitis so you need to protect your hands. Uh, and with, with nitrile gloves are the best. So here we have a hive that's ready to have the strips put in place. The placement of the strips is really important. This is a very warm day, so you can see the bees aren't clustered at all. They're covering all 10 frames. Remember, these strips are going in for 42 days. By the time that time has elapsed, the colony will be tightly clustered. It will have lost a lot of summer bees, so it'll be smaller and more tightly clustered because of the temperature. So that cluster will be in this zone right in here. Because this material is somewhat repellent to the bees, we need to place it right in the middle of where the cluster will be later on. So that, if we put one strip in there and one strip in there and just very gradually push them down, if the queen happens to be in the way, uh, if we do it gradually, we're not going to injure her. Note that we have the two points going in the same direction so that the strips will lie down well when we put our canvas inner cover in place. So we put that on and then we come back in 42 days to remove the strips. When we're back to pulling those strips out, the bees will by that point have really welded them in place with propolis. So it's challenging to pull them out with our hands. So what we use is a pair of pliers. And when we're doing that, we don't even need to wear the nitrile gloves. So we just grab them and it'll be tough to pull them out, but we pull those out and then dispose of them in the household garbage. 
So Apivar is a very effective product. It's roughly 90% effective. So that's one of the pros. Uh, another one is that it's quite easy to handle uh, and it's safe to handle as well. Uh, another pro is that it's not temperature dependent, so we can use it at different times of year. Uh, as far as cons are concerned, uh, there can be a buildup of contamination in the comb, not so much the honey, so that's one problem. Mites can develop resistance to it as well, so we need to be handling it with good care to prevent that. Uh, a pro and con is the t a timing issue. In the spring, it's a bit of a con because it's such a long treatment period and it's hard to fit that in in our spring management. Whereas in the fall, a long treatment period is a good thing because it helps protect the hives from reinfestation coming in from other colonies. But on balance, uh, it's a very effective product and it's something we need to be considering as one of the tools in our toolkit. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you another time.